Here we are back again, one week on from the opening day, and you get to inherit the scores of your predecessor, Dave oh, Diamond, brilliant. in the hot seat right. last okay. week. And let me right. just um, put the scores up from... There we go. He didn't do well he didn't for you. He didn't do so. well, did he? Yeah. Look at all he that red. Have, yeah, it didn't have the best of starts, did he? I presume that's why the feature's still here because uh, you, you cleaned up on week one. Exactly right. As long as as long as I continue to win, then that's right. all that matters. Okay. Opening day, notoriously difficult yeah, to I mean, predict yeah. anyway. But anything there catch your eye? Obviously, the blue tinted spectacles. Of I was going to say, you were both very podcast. confident, but I, but I was as well. I thought we'd beat Bolton, so I was in the same camp, to be honest with you. Um, and I think overwhelmingly, the, the, telegra- the Telegram group thought the same thing, didn't they? And if we hadn't conceded the penalty, it would have been 1 0. Anyway, there's my logic Sorry. on that one. So, yeah, nice six point cushion for me um, as the host. Um, no pressure on you, Seb, to get, you know, it's six point. Not- Are you not just going to get a point for the week? No, I'm getting well. I'm oh, right, okay, want. right. So you're sick. Okay, I presume you just win week one. So week one will be one, and you. We can the... do both. We can do both. No, no, I know, I know you that you and Craig have got that. an agenda against me for fixing this. I'm you not... give yourself that six point lead. You deserve that. Well, we can do either. We can do strokes, or we can do holes. It's no, that's golf parlance, by the way, for anyone not familiar. I'll do both, so that I can't be accused of fixing anything. I can't fix predictions, Seb. If I would, I wouldn't be working on this podcast. Put it that way. <laughs> so, yeah, six-point gap to make up, or a, or a one-week delta to make up. There you go. I'm using all the impressive-sounding words. Let's talk about this week. Let's get on with things. Let's do it in fixture order, shall we? So we've given our scores here. Barnsley, Cheltenham first up, and no real surprises that Barzi heavily favoured here. Lost last time out though, Seb. Yeah, tough but away Chelten game. Last probably, week week. Yeah. yeah. Tough, tough game away to Plymouth last week. You know, I, I I can see them winning that one fairly comfortably. Maybe Mr. Norwood. I, I think he came on last week, didn't he? He didn't start, but he came on maybe a few more minutes in the tank and maybe a goal for him to warm himself up before the Portman Road return at the end of the uh, end of the month as well. We need to remember though, Cheltenham nearly shocked Peterborough on the opening day. Yeah, it was, was it a crazy two, two turnaround, deal. wasn't it? Yeah, two nil up, and sitting. I listened to the uh, Dara McAnthony podcast earlier today, and he said, "Yeah, he said at half time they could have been more. They could have been three down, four down. I think they made four changes at half time. Grant McCann changed four players, and well, with, when you've got the likes of you know Johnson, Clark, Harris, Jack Marriott in the side, you're always going to deliver goals and stuff, aren't you? So um, yeah, come back from them, and they're they're up and running, aren't they? Yeah, Alfie May on the score sheet there for Cheltenham as well, so. He's a, yeah, maybe we, yeah, this is still early days, isn't it? Season's still evolving. Yeah. So worth noting there that Cheltenham, yeah, I mean, psychologically, though, so I mean, we, I'm trying to think of games like that where we've had on the opening day and, and the seasons that have come from that. It's difficult to not read too much into it, though, isn't it? Because, you know, 2 0 up, up at home, is that more about Peterborough than Cheltenham? I think so, because, you know, like I say, the players that Peterborough have, you could always fear. I mean, if if Cheltenham were to go 2 nil up against maybe, a, no disrespect, a, a Port Vale, a Fleetwood, you know, somebody lower down in the league, I'd fully expect them to see the game out. But when you do it, you know, the likes of Peterborough, we, I, I tip them for the league. We fully expect them to be up there challenging. And I guess, you know, as soon as one goes in, the probably the, the quality of players they have in the side. I don't know if Schmodic played before he left, but Marriott scored, Clark Harris scored, Taylor was there, obviously, you know, I think against the side of that cat- Caliber, there's no real, you know, sort of shame in, in in losing that one. Next up, Bolton, who we know very well, and because of that, we've erred on the side of them with a narrow one goal margin, which is endorsed by 63% from our Telegram group. But Wickham, you know, resounding win on the opening day, albeit against a team that we expect to struggle in Burton. It was, wasn't it? 3-0, yeah. 3-0 before half-time as well. They just came out the traps sort of flying. They, they went a bit under the radar in our pre-match, uh, pre, you know, our, our 1-24. to I think we both had them just outside the playoffs, didn't we? We thought they'd fall back a little bit this year. And I guess they're just going to go quietly go about their business. Bolton, for the first half an hour, I was impressed by them last week. Okay, they faded in the second half of stuff. But when you've got a, a quality player like Affaline in the side, you know, then you, you, you're always going to be able to create and stuff. And I, I think they will win that one because um, I think they're a good side. And I think they will be up there at the end of the season. Home advantage, a big factor. Yeah. Burton, Bristol Rovers, potentially a relegation six <laughs> points already. You've gone for an away win. I've, I've kind of, I, I just, with Burton, think it's really easy to go really hard on them being in trouble. We need to remember Bristol Rovers obviously lost to Forest Green, as we were talking about just before. 
but you're going for a Bristol Rovers victory, a bounce back from that opening day defeat. I am, yeah. I mean, like I say, you know, earlier on we discussed the, the Forest Green game and it was an 89th minute winner. It looked to be heading for a draw, so a decent performance by them. Burton, I'm just worried about because there doesn't seem to be much positivity kind of anywhere amongst their fans or anything. You know, signings aren't amazing. Hasselbank seems quite kind of quiet and stuff. And, you know, you get those sides which kind of, you know, punch above their weight for a little while. And then as soon as that kind of investment stops and that recruitment doesn't, doesn't, hit the heights it's meant to they do start to struggle so i do worry for them a little bit this year i don't think i tip them to go down in the 124s um but i think bristol rose will win that one on the weekend okay next up charlton v derby we're going for a stalemate yeah, I've gone for a, for, for a one-all. So they won last week. As I said, Conor Hurahan in this league is a bit of a cheat code, I think. Um, and Charlton, was it 2-2 on the opening day of the season? A 2-2? Yeah, they nearly won it. They did, yeah, yeah. Um, and I think that's a, a, a nailed-on kind of... I mean, they were... Yeah, the, God, if you thought Charlton Derby, you'd be thinking back to, what, 20 <laughs> years ago, that was a, a Premier League kind of mid-table Premier League kind of fixture. And yeah, it shows how far they've, they've both fallen. But no, I think a, a draw for that one, a solid point on the road for Derby. And, um, and yeah, get Charlton signed up running at home. Yeah, we agree on that one. Next to Port Vale, another... Well, it's certainly a, a clash of the promoted sides. I guess if I was being harsh, it's maybe a... Um, another relegation six-pointer as well. And yeah, you're favouring Exeter on that one. Do you want to talk us through that? Point away, wasn't it? At Lincoln on the opening day of the season. Yeah. And they did, they did okay. And, and Port Vale, was it? They Port Vale beat, who was it? Fleetwood. Beat. That's it, Fleetwood, yeah. sorry, yeah. Um, yeah, I just think a battle of the of the promoted size. I'm just tipping Exeter to come out on that one. It, it's so hard. Is it? This, this time of the season, it's almost impossible. There's no kind of form going into games. It's just what your gut kind of tells you. And on that one for me, I've just gone for Exeter. Yeah, I think... Poor Vale surprised me a little bit. I it was one of the teams in my one to twenty four that I predicted. I think to finish bottom, maybe maybe it was one of these two sides. I think Poor Vale might surprise a few, so that's why I've gone for the for the draw. But no surprises for Fleet with Plymouth. Seb, Plymouth up and no. running with a win against Barnsley that would have given them plenty of confidence and a long old trip to Fleetwoods. But we're expecting them to win. I think so. Yeah, like we discussed on the the show with Gab, they've they've kept the squad together. They've got this lad who scored last week from Villa, haven't they? Is it Azaz, Aziz, Aziz, Azaz? We we'll do our research, don't we? Eh? It's, it's something like Azaz, Finn, Finn Azaz, or something. He's the guy who scored on loan from from, oh, Villa. from Norwich. Sorry, yeah. the guy from, from Norwich. He's from Villa. Villa, Finn Azaz, yeah. Yeah, from Villa. Um, he scored last week and yeah, they've done they've done really smart business to keep that squad together because I thought it would break up over the summer. I thought Jeff Cott, Hardy, Connor Grant would all kind of move on elsewhere and stuff, but they've done really well and I think I think they'll do that one at Fleetwood quite quite comfortably. Next up, yeah, the big one for us at least. And um, <laughs> the blue tinted spectacles are back on. What's your store what's your thoughts on you? I mean, you're going for a clean sheet. Yep. I'm I'm worried that we might concede from a set piece again or a penalty perhaps, but both of us going for the two goals. And frankly, we have to, you know, we, it's a little bit, a lot of, it's really easy to get really nervous and anxious and stuff like this. I think we probably need to temper a little bit, you know, the thoughts on forest green because the opening day for them, first time at this level, it just needs to be a professional job, isn't it? So get out of there with, with all the points and don't make any fuss. Kind and of it's things. what we didn't do last year, is it? You know, we took, what, a point off Cheltenham, two points off Morecambe, no points off Bolton, and one point off Cambridge. You know, at no point did we did we turn up and sort of do a professional job against the newly promoted side, and that has to change this year. I mean, you know, I've, I've gone for 2-0. I'm pretty confident. I think the, the greater quality will shine through um, by the end of the game, and, and we, we really kind of have to win that one. Because if we were to draw or god forbid lose that puts a lot of pressure going into the mk game doesn't it well let's, let's talk about uh, the mk it's a nice segue because mk perhaps the surprise result of last weekend was mk yeah. losing to cambridge will be i think mk were battering them towards the end suddenly hit the woodwork and we're predicting uh, we're split a little bit on mk here you're going for a home win i'm going for an away win I am, yeah. I'm not fully bought into the Sheffield Wednesday kind of romp the league, love it. It was a I surprise, said it, wasn't it? Defensively. I said it on the preview show, you know, I think they're going to take a bit of time to get into their stride. And I think if they do struggle, given the owner they've got, I could well see Darren Moore kind of being, you know, under uh, under pressure. Three all, wasn't it, against Portsmouth on the opening day? Yep. Um a couple of goals, a couple of assists was from the Harry right. Kane that is Joe Piggott Harry, on the yeah, assist. The Harry Kane of the uh, of League One, um, and I just yeah, I just think they're going to take a little bit of time to get going, and I think MK will will win that one and look to get their season up and running. I think Darren Moore will have them up for it, and I think 
I'm still not sure about MK Dons, which is why I'm backing Sheffield Wednesday in that one will be. I know it's an away game, so we'll see. The boat race derby, we are both going for Oxford here. You know, last This time last week, and I need to kind of, um, we had some Oxford folks in the comments, so thank you for, if you're not an Ipswich fan, for joining in. We're very happy to have you here. We recorded um, a few hours before Cameron Rannigan signed a new contract there rather than choosing to join Michael Appleton at Blackpool, which is good news. Um, and but we're not back in Cambridge to continue their heroics from last week, Seb. No, I think Oxford will will sort of get their season up and running. They lost obviously a late it was a late goal by Derby last week, wasn't it? Was it eightieth minute or so from Hurricane? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So no, I think they did okay last week, and I think they'll look to get their season up and running. And and Cambridge obviously will be on such a high after beating MK Dons because none of us ever saw that one coming. But I think it's uh, I think normal service will resume, and the, the the more fancy team for that one will, will clean up in Oxford. And strangely, Cambridge. And Millwall, the only two teams in the EFL who chose to play their Carabao Cup tie this week. Yeah, what, what is that? Is that just a club choice? It's thing? A choice. They, all clubs get the choice. I think so. They were the only okay. two that went for it. Um, okay. Whether that might play against Cambridge and um, Oxford, obviously, have had you know a, a, a no game midweek. Um, who knows? Small margins. I guess it depends perhaps. who you've got next weekend as well. If Cambridge have got a horrible trip next weekend, it makes sense to get it done whilst you're more local against Maybe Oxford so. this weekend. If, if they're, I don't know where they are next weekend, but if they're going to Plymouth or Fleetwood or something, it might make sense to get it out of the way whilst you're local. And then you can have kind of add, you know, not not as much travelling is required. Obviously for us, we've got Cole U on Tuesday night and then MK on Saturday. So it makes it nice and easy and nice and local. Here I am to totally quash that um, <laughs> conspiracy are theory. Peter they're at home to Exeter. All right. Brilliant, right? Yeah, no logic. So, <laughs> well, maybe they see Exeter as a, a game they need to win. So maybe, maybe your theory. Is, mm, let us know in the comments on Seb's theory. <laughs> uh, Peterborough, Morecambe, no surprises. We're both going for a two-goal margin. I'm still not sure. Well, I've gone for a two-nil. You've got Peterborough conceding, and I probably would follow suit. Now they conceded two against Cheltenham, and they so yeah. suggest that maybe they are better going forward than they are at the back. And do you remember in the 124s, didn't you predict Morecambe to go down? I did. That's never happened in their history. Do you remember that was my fact of the week oh, yeah, on the opening, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the opening pre-match show of last Hello, year that led fans. to that amazing feature? Yeah, they've never been relegated. So, I'd, yeah, I thought I'd bring that one back up against you. I, nice. I can see Peterborough scoring goals for fun in this league, given their talents. I know they've lost Smodic. I guess it'll depend if they lose anybody else before the end of the window. But, yeah, I can see them comfortably winning that one. And then Pompey Lincoln. We've, again, both gone for home wins as, as have telegram group um and probably more of a would you, well were you impressed with pompey getting that point uh, it was nearly three wasn't it away yeah. at sheffield wednesday yeah tough um, place to go obviously i mean yeah it's i mean sheffield wednesday start of the season is pretty pretty hard isn't it they have portsmouth and now they've got mk dons but i think that was a really good performance by by portsmouth away from home the harry kane of, of league one is already up and running with his um you know with his assist quota and stuff colby bishop is always going to be a threat up front and um, and they, who's the guy they signed from Spurs? Dane Scarlett, isn't it? He's a, another young player that I really, really like. So I think they'll be quite comfortable in that one. So, and Lincoln and that's also a, a, tough, a tough welcome, isn't it, for, for Mark Kennedy? Yeah, poor guy. Yeah, mm. and l- last week was a, a bit tough for them as well. I think, when was it a last minute? Well, one they took the lead. Uh, yeah, they did. Yeah, it was... No, no, last week was... Oh, no, it was last, uh, I'm confusing them with Fleetwood. Um, yeah, they went yeah, one, one or They equalised, didn't they? Hopper, didn't yeah. they? Yeah. Um, and let's finish things off with... Shrews, I can't get excited. I'm not going to lie about Shrewsbury v. Atkington. I've gone for a nil-nil. You're giving Shrewsbury the home advantage, presumably on the basis of their recruitment. Uh, yeah, yeah. Very sensible kind of summer business. And yeah, I think they'll win that one. And yeah, we'll see if... Any, nil-nil any for Atkinson. them last week, though, Seb. It was, yeah. But I, I, I just think they'll oversee. I mean, I think Atkington might really look to kind of struggle this year. You know, they're, they're not making amazing friends off the pitch with some of the, <laughs> the stuff the chairman's putting on Twitter and stuff. And I, I think Shrewsbury's uh, recruitment throughout the summer was very smart. You know, the likes of, um, uh, who's the guy from Portsmouth? Aidan O'Brien and stuff. The players they added, I think, were, were quality, and... yeah, quality players. And I, I, I think they'll do okay this year. Grand. Well, let us know what you think in the comments. We want to hear your predictions as well. So please... Um, reply there if you're watching on YouTube as well or at Blue Monday ITFC if you want to share them with us. So I'll just put them up once more. So home wins, we think, for Barnsley. Home wins for Bolton. Uh, we're a bit split on Burton. We're not particularly excited about the likelihood of goals there. The Telegram group erring on the side of a draw. Same for Charlton and Derby. Extra Port Vale, similar. A little bit of split the difference there. The Telegram group, 
um, feeling good about Exeter though. Um, Plymouth continuing their form seems um, an easy one to predict there. And Ipswich, blue tinted spectacles away win, um, though maybe more difficult than we think. MK Don, Sheffield Wednesday could be a bit of a tight one. Oxford to get their season up and running, perhaps. Peterborough continue their form. Portsmouth as well. Um, and Shrewsbury, Accrington maybe looks like the Telegram group erring on the side of the home team. Let us know how we got on. Um, feel free to supplement our predictions with your own. And we'll be back next week to let you know how we got on and to predict another round of League One fixtures. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up and if subscribe if you're a League One supporter um, from another club and want to see this show every week and it will land in your subscriptions. Then do get involved in that and um, follow us at Blue Monday ITFC on the Twitter as well. Seb, thank you very much. I was going to say good luck. Not sure I mean it, but good luck and we'll see how we get on next week. Thank you.